Hello grade 10s, today we're looking at linear inequalities. Now they are almost like linear equations except instead of having an equal sign you've got either a less than or greater than sign or a less than or equal to sign or greater than or equal to sign. And in general we can solve um, these inequalities in exactly the same way that we would solve linear equations with one exception. And this is it. If you're going to multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequalities. Well, why is this? Well, let's say we've got um, negative 3 and 7. Okay, negative 3 is less than 7. And let's say we were going to divide it by negative 1. So we, what you do to the one side, you do to the other. We're going to divide both of them by negative 1. Alright, then we'd get 3 and negative 7. Now if we had to continue to put our inequality sign this way around, that's clearly false. 3 isn't smaller than negative 7. So that's the reason why we would swap the sign around so that it become, the statement now becomes true. 3 is greater than negative 7. And when we're solving for x, the same will apply. Right, number one is solve the following inequalities and represent your solutions on a number line. You will be asked to represent on the number line nearly every time you solve an inequality. All right, let's look at it. 5x minus 2 is less than 8. So let's um, just treat it like an equation for now and say, right, what can I do? I could get rid of this negative 2 by adding 2 to both sides. Just like an equation, we're now going to get 5x is less than 10. And then how would you get rid of the 5? We're going to divide by 5 on both sides. All right, now we're dividing by a positive number, so nothing needs to change. X is less than 2. It's just as easy as what you were working with in grade 8 equations, really, except now it's an inequality. So this means that the answer is not just X is 2, it's rather X is all the real numbers which are less than 2. And the way we can show that on the number line is just to mark off 2, draw a circle above it. Does it include the 2? No, because it just is less than. So we're going to leave it as an open circle and draw our line extending to the left because it's everything which is less than 2. Number two, we have negative 3x is less than or equal to x minus 12. Right, we've got x's on both sides of the equation. And we can still try and isolate the x on the left-hand side. So we can subtract x from both sides. Right, so that will give us negative 4x, which is less than negative 12. Right, now we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. And because we are doing this, we need to watch out. We are going to have to change the direction of our inequality signs. So on the next line, it's going to have to face the other way. Um, negative 4x divided by negative 4 is x, and negative 12 divided by negative 4 is 3. So the solution here is all the values of x that are 3 or bigger, and it includes the 3. So when we draw our number line, the circle above it is going to be closed. In other words, colored in because it includes the 3. Right, 
at number 3, 2 open brackets x minus 7, close brackets, plus 1 is greater than 0. Every time you see brackets in an, either an equation or an inequality, we have to first distribute to get rid of the brackets. So we're going to get 2x minus 14 plus 1 is greater than 0. And to make it easier, I would first collect the like terms and say that 2x minus 13 is greater than 0. All right, what we can do now is we can add 13 to both sides. And we're going to get 2x is greater than 13. And our last step is we're going to divide by 2. It's a positive number, so we don't have to change the sign. Okay, so x is greater than 13 over 2. All right, so let's just mark that off on our number line. It's six and a half, but you don't really have to convert it because it's the only number you're drawing on the number line. Um, it's an open circle because it doesn't include 13 over 2, and it's everything bigger, so we're going to draw our line with the arrow going to the right. Number four has a fraction in it. We've got 3x plus 2 over 2 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we've got 3x minus 5. So when we're working with fractions, remember we have to look to see what its LCD is. This is an easy one because we've only got one fraction, so our LCD is 2. And then we are going to multiply everything by that LCD. So on the left-hand side, you can see the reason for that is we are now going to get rid of the fraction. And we're also going to multiply the right-hand side by 2. It has to be the whole of the right-hand side. So you might want to first write it out like this. And then you'll notice that we are able to distribute the 2. Alright, so on the right hand side we're going to now have 6x minus 10. Our next step is to get all the x's to be on the left hand side, all the numbers to be on the right. So we're going to use inverse operations with a 6x. When it moves over this side will become minus 6x. We had negative 10 on the right and we moved over the 2 to the other side which will become negative 2. So when I simplify that, I've got negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 12. Now the last step is to divide both sides by negative 3. And now we've got to be careful. We're dividing by a negative number. So on the next step, we've got to swap the direction of our inequality sign. So we're going to have x is greater than or equal to positive 4. Alright, and on the number line, we're going to colour in the circle because it includes the 4 and it's everything bigger than that. So our line is going to extend to the right. Right, now you should be ready to try exercise 7, A and B um, that was given to you as classwork in your notes. After this, there'll be another video about compound inequalities.